So a while back, I did a video on using Docker debug to debug distroless containers. Now, Docker debug is fantastic, but you do need a Docker Desktop Pro license to take advantage of it. So I wanted to show a couple of other alternatives. First up, we're going to look at kubectl debug. So to the terminal. OK, so the main reason tooling becomes important when debugging distroless containers is because there's no shell in a distroless container. So you can't just exec in to see what's going on like you would with a Debian or Alpine container. And that means we need the tooling to do some extra work to make this possible. And normally that means creating a temporary container that shares the file and process namespaces with the target container. So let's see how this looks with kubectl debug. So I have a kind cluster running locally. Um, there's no pods currently. Uh, but I have this Nginx YAML, which will start a cgr.dev slash chain guard slash Nginx image. Um, the container is called Nginx, but the pod is called Nginx dash pod. OK, so let's try and get that running. That looks good. OK. Now, say we want to debug this pod. Maybe it's thrown an error or displaying the wrong text, etc. So if it was a regular container, you'd expect to do something like this. But because it's distroless, we get bin sh no such file directory. And that's where kubectl debug comes in. So I can run a command like this. And what we're saying is, kubectl debug dash it for interactive terminal. Then we give it the image. The image is the debug container image. Um, so typically, you want something with a shell, and you're able to, to install more debugging tools. Um, so in this case, we said Alpine. We've then given it the, the name of the pod, so the Nginx pod, but also the container we're interested in. So this one's caught me out a few times. You do want to pass dash s target and the name of the container you need so that you get um, access to the, the target container namespace or process namespace. OK, so I've run that. OK, and I've got a shell. And if I run ps, I see the Nginx processes. So that's excellent. And it looks like it's all worked. Um, Unfortunately, it's not as easy as that. Uh, so if I do ls, I see a container file system. But this isn't the file system for my target container. It's the file system for the debug container. Yeah, so we're in an Alpine container at the minute. And say I want to debug this etsy nginx nginx.conf file. Well, that's not in this container. It's in the target container. Now, I can or should be able to get to that namespace uh, via the proc file system. But I get permission denied, which you might think is odd because I am root. Um, but this is to do with namespaces and permissions and things not being quite as they seem in containers. So I can't actually access the container file system in this case. Um, and there's actually a second problem as well. If I was to run this pod again, and we're going to call it pod2, and this time we've got a security context that says you can't run containers as root. And you can probably guess what the problem is going to be here. So I started the second pod. And if we try to do this, the exact same command as we did before, um, well, it's going to pause for a while. And then eventually, it should throw tell, give me a warning. But it never actually connects to the container because of this rule of not running as root, which, of course, the Alpine container wants to run as root by default. OK, so there's a second issue there. And they're both kind of related issues. Um, what you really want to do in this case is run your containers not as a root user, but as a different user, as the chain guard nginx image runs. So the chain guard nginx defines a non-root user. 
that is running ads. And that's, you know, security best practice. And what we want is we want our deeper container to also run as the same user. So how can we do that? So in this case, uh, we've used the Alpine image, but we can change to use a different image. So I could also create a Docker file uh, and with a user statement, it changes the user. Unfortunately, there's no dash dash user command to pass to kubectl debug, which would be really useful. Um, but what I can do is use not the Nginx latest image, but the latest dev image. The latest dev image um, includes um, a shell and package manager. So I can use this as a, as a good debugging image. And I'm also sure it's going to have the same user because it's just a variant of the Nginx image. OK. So hopefully this will work. Yes. So now I am in the container. I run PS. Yes, I see the Nginx processes. Um, now, again, I still need to figure out where the file system is. Oh, of course, I've got my development image, so this file exists. But I'm still in the debug container. I'm not in the proper container names namespace. But I can get there. There you go. So that's the actual Nginx conf from my target container. OK, so to fix both of those problems with kubectl debug, what we did was we started a container that runs as the same user. Um, so yeah, top tip there. And um, the other top tip is remember this target command. That's the two things that tripped me up with kubectl debug. Um, kubectl debug does have a couple more powerful things that I'm not going to go through now. Um, but I do want to mention, but I thought it was particularly useful is it has a, a dash dash copy. Um, commands. So you can create a copy of a container and modify that to see what's going on with how affecting your production image. So that's quite cool. The other tool I want to show you is cdebug by Ivan Velichko. And I also want to say thanks to Ivan, as it was a conversation with him that inspired this video and helped me understand the user problems with kubectl debug. So we still have our kubectl pods running. I'm going to try accessing them with cdebug. Here we're saying exec dash it, so interactive terminal as per usual. But we've added this dash dash privilege flag that uh, cdebug, cdebug accepts. And we're targeting the Kubernetes pod, Nginx pod, and the container Nginx inside. OK, and that's worked straight away. So that's great. We can see the processes as before. Um, but we can also access the file system. And if we take a look to leave out the slash, and we can even edit files in the file system because we're privileged in this case. Let's we'll put a blank space in so we don't break anything. OK, so that's even better. We can see the file system, we can see the processes, and we can even change files and play with things. But what happens if we try it with our other pod? So we've got this Nginx pod 2. Um, well, it does kind of work. Um, but because we can't run this root, it changes to the user 1000, uh, 1000, which makes sense. Um, but I don't want to do that. In this case, what we're going to do is pass dash dash user. So cdebug does take a dash dash user flag. And in this case, we can use it to set our user to the same user as the container. OK, so that's worked. And we haven't got any warnings um, about user. Type PS, I can still see my processes. Now, what happens if I access the file system this time? Looks like I can see it. But if I open the file, nope, I'll put it up. Slash in, my mistake. So I can look at the file, 
but in this case I can't edit it. But still a pretty good result. All I had to do is pass the dash dash user flag. Okay, so that was both CDebug and kubectl debug, uh, which are both great utilities for debugging distroless containers. Um, please do try them out and let me know how you get on.